Think I'd miss a father-son picnic with my kid? No, I'm looking at the date right now. It's that big red circle. Absolutely, I will make the best hot dogs that you and your friends have ever tasted. All right, love you too, Kim. Hey, you make sure to hang Graham's phone up all the way. Okay. Got a hypothetical for you. Oh, I hate those, but you're the boss. Say you're Michael Corinthos. Your testimony is the most wanted piece of evidence in your father's murder trial. To elude said testimony, your family has stashed you in a secret location for weeks. Suddenly, you're back in Port Charles, responsible for hiding yourself. Where would you be? What the heck are you doing with this? You're a good person to approach, you know? Luke Spencer's son would know every nook and cranny in this town. Probably used him once or twice. It's a lot easier to disappear than people think. Sometimes you just hide in plain sight. Is that what you think Michael's doing? I don't know. Maybe. Look, I could probably find him. I just have a lot of misgivings about trying. I mean, Michael's my cousin. It's the same conflict of interest that made me step down from the investigation into Claudia's murder. I don't want to hunt down family, Mac. You think Michael saw Sonny kill Claudia, don't you? I think Michael was in the cabin, yes. Lucky I feel sorry for that kid. You know, I mean, he got his brain scrambled in a bungled hit on his mob boss father. He spent a year in a coma, then watched his stepmother get bludgeoned to death. The last thing he needs is my entire force trying to track him down. This isn't a hypothetical anymore. Michael's got to be brought in one way or another. Now, given the choice, I'd like it to be as easy on him as possible. Okay, I'll find him. Dad? Private property, you know. This state is walled, gated. And there are always ways to get in. Like over by the Rose Garden. Rose Garden. Yeah, if you climb up the Tiger Maple, it's not that hard to make your way over the wall and drop down the other side. Uh, Emily, now when you were kids, you used to spend a lot of time here. Yeah, that I did. Well, now you're all grown up. A cop. Shouldn't you, uh, appear at the door with a warrant? I have probable cause. Yeah, I found a candy wrapper outside the east gate. Could have been a burglar with a sweet tooth. Smooth. Huh. Slippery, but smooth. So what's the story? Edward hiding out here? He isn't known here. No one ever comes down to the boathouse except for Alice. Once a week to clean it. So far, I haven't seen her. She's a juror on your dad's trial. You're supposed to be coming back with a verdict anytime. Well, I guess I really blew it by letting you find me, didn't I? Well, that depends on the verdict. Look, how'd you find out I was here? It's just a process of elimination. There's only a few decent places in this town where you can hide out. You weren't at any of them, and then I realized you are a quarter vein. Lots of places to hide here. So, what happens next? I have to take you in. But first, I want you to do something for me. So, is this a negotiation? Or did I do something for you, you return the favor? Like maybe walk away and pretend you never saw me? I can't do that. No, that's not my wife. I knew you'd say that. Why, well, I, uh, I have to turn you in. But I'd like to hear what really happened that night. From you. Not with Carly's spin or Dante's conflict clouding things. Straightforward from your perspective. Uh, when you look back with perspective, it all ties together. I was already afraid of what I might find. My mom had a, a risky pregnancy, and we tiptoe around her for months because any stress caused a stroke. So, and after everything that just happened, I felt scared for her. Michael followed a track through the woods to a cabin. 
At first, he was relieved. Carly and Claudia had found shelter. I made my way up to the door, and I heard my mom screaming. Does it get hazy from there? I wish. I remember every second. I mean, can you imagine what's going through this kid's head? There's his mother on the couch. She'd just given birth, and this mad woman who'd kidnapped her at gunpoint is about to take off with the baby. So there wasn't much time to think. I just knew I couldn't let Claudia leave that cabin with my baby sister. So I grabbed the axe and I ran inside and I hit her as hard as I possibly could. And then she just crumpled. So still. Blood making a pool under her head. Michael dropped to his knees beside Claudia. That's where he got her blood on his shirt. And she was dead. I didn't mean to kill Claudia, okay? It's a pretty hellacious night. I'm sorry I had to go through it. And there's this voice inside me trying to convince me that I didn't really kill Claudia. She wasn't dead. You know, but I knew that she was dead because I had her blood on my hands. And it was still warm. Then Jason and Sam showed up. They took charge and they told me what to do. I'm sure in that moment, Jason's only thought was protecting you. He's usually a pretty clear thinker. But when someone you love, especially a child you love, is at risk, sometimes you just panic. Jason doesn't panic. Well, he must have that night. Because if somebody would have been thinking clearly, they would have called the police. Forensics would have backed up your statement and Claudia's death would have gone down in self-defense. But when you're terrified, all rational thought just goes out the window. You fall back on what you know, you go with your instincts. The cover-up just becomes automatic. I know this for a fact, because that's exactly what my father would have done. My dad showed up. He said I did the right thing. And I finally made him proud. Was your son my... Give me that tough. Yeah, I don't even know what that means. That's my point. I mean, these should be some of the best times of your life. You're young. You're going off to college soon. You should be dreaming about your future, not trying to cover up your past. Oh, all my parents and Jason wanted to do was protect me. They want me to wake up from this, this nightmare intact. Are you? No. No, a piece of me died that night when I went after Claudia with an axe handle and killed her. But I have to own that. No, I have to take responsibility for my actions and live with the consequences. Well, that's, that's the first step. I think the next would probably be making sure that you can wake up every morning, look in the mirror, and live with the guy that's staring back at you. <sighs> Michael, I have to turn you in to the court, okay? But whether you decide to tell the judge that you killed Claudia or not, it's up to you. you give me a choice. That's more than anyone's done for me in a long time. But look, I gotta step up. I admire that. Let's do this. Alright, let's go. Hey, hey, hey! Michael, you're, you're coming with me. That's not gonna happen, Jason. Good luck, you just turn your head and let the kid walk Can't away. do that. Then I'm giving you fair warning. I'm gonna take Michael and there's nothing you're gonna do to stop me. Let's go. Then I guess we're at a stalemate. Come on, Bucky. You're not, you're not gonna shoot me. I'm not in any place I would kill you. Look, nobody's getting shot because of me. Hey, dude, will you just trust me on this? Will you just let the kid walk away? He just told me what really happened to Claudia. I can't just let him go. 
But it's up to him, Jason. It's not up to you. If he wants to make a confession that goes on the record. On the record, the court already knows that Michael killed Claudia. Dante walked in the trial and gave Michael up. 